maybe you don't, it just seems kind of, uh, you're just too busy to think about it. You're too busy to really think about this day. And uh, it's a pretty, it's a pretty um, ominous day, if I was going to describe it. God even describes um, it, we'll read it again, uh, as we did last week. Um, there's a component of it that is the terror of the Lord. I don't, I don't know what that, I, I can't say that I've experienced that here on earth. Um, I don't necessarily know what that's like. Um, just being in God's, being, the, here's, a, here's what I believe it to be based on the way it's descriptive here. It, it is something to have to do with some kind of disappointment of some kind from him. Um, if he, it is, anyway, and being in the presence of God, having the present, having God himself disappointed in me with, with things, I don't know, I, I, I can't, I can't describe that. I don't know how to really think through what that's like, but it's something we ought to, uh, fear and, and motivate. It ought to motivate us to try and eliminate as much of that as possible um, because I don't think that's something that we're going to be real happy with ourselves with on that day um, in doing that but um, but anyway so look at uh, Romans chapter 14 verse 10 it says but why dost thou judge thy brother or why dost thou set it not thy brother um, for we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ Romans 14 10 um, so we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ and um uh, God just didn't put a verse in there that just says we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. He actually, in in this case, the reason he brings that up is because he's he's saying, hey, don't don't judge a brother. Um, we're not supposed to judge each other, uh, whether we be family or or friends here at church and things like that. That's um, we're just not supposed to do that. Now, we do, and we have to always fight that in our heart um, in, in that way. But God's saying, hey, don't do that. That's my job. I will do that. I'll take care of that, all that business. It's all going to come out, uh, you know, on, on judgment day. He says, but because, because I'm going to be doing it later, you don't need to do it now. Number one, we're not even qualified to do it. Um, number two... Uh, he's got it covered and so part when you think about it then if we were to take that verse to heart that means that means that um, I am to trust part of my faith is actually to trust God to judge those things by not judging them myself yeah. that's actually part that should be part of my faith that should be part of the fabric of my faith that hey, you know, I see, um, I see my son Matt do something, and I go, well, what, what kind of idiot move was that? You know, now uh, that might be my initial reaction, but I need to get that right, right away in my heart, and definitely not express it, um, or tell it to somebody, uh, or whatever. But at some point, I can say, okay, God, that's on you, man. I don't, I don't know what's going on there. That's okay. Walk, walk away from that. Um, and we need to make that part of our faith fabric. Um, now, the fact is, uh, we're going to fail at that. And the brethren are going to fail at that. Um, most people don't go through their day thinking of that verse. Very few people. I mean, me, me included. I don't know that I wake up every morning and say, okay, God, help me not to judge people today. I, I, I don't know that I typically pray that prayer. I'm like judging everybody. Uh, you know, so I, so, but but it needs to be part of our fabric, um, in terms of that. Now, I don't mean uh, God's not saying here not to make judgments. You have to make certain judgments in life on how to how to choose to go, which directions to go. Just because somebody's a brethren doesn't mean I'm hanging out with them. It, I, I, it's just that's just the way it is. It's I, there's there are brethren that will get me off. There are brethren that will get me away from my faith. There are directions that people will go. There, there are churches that will get me away from my faith. That, uh, just because somebody has Baptist or something or some 
fuzzy name on some sign out there. That doesn't, that, that's meaningless. So God's not saying we don't make judgments um, in, according to our faith. But I'm not to judge a brother. Um, I'm, not to, I'm not to condemn somebody and think, man, what in the world do they think they are? Man, God, man if that's Christianity, I just don't know what is going on here. People, people get all uh, start getting into that kind of mode there. And God's saying, hey, look, there's going to be a day when that all happens. And, um, and so anyway, we just leave that up to God. Um, that's why when our children, the, uh, most everybody in here is a parent. You're raising kids. Uh, you know, our, our kids are going to grow up and they're going to have to choose faith on their own. Um, Matt's here, Tim and Carissa, they're back in Tennessee. Their choices of faith don't define mine. They don't. My faith is my faith regardless of what choice they make. And likewise, uh, my faith doesn't define their, theirs. They can make a choice for right regardless of what I've chosen. Uh, my kids don't define me. They don't define uh, uh, just because my kid was to make a choice. If they were to make a choice that goes against my faith or the way I raised them, stuff like that, that has no bearing on what is true. And some people think, so, sometimes, you know, good-hearted parents sometimes think, oh, you know, my kid didn't. My kid, you know, didn't choose this, and you know, I tried to raise them this way, and then, and then they end up defeated themselves and give up their faith that they taught their kid because their kid gave it up. Like what? Look, if 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 my kid wants to go be an idiot, he's gonna be an idiot on his own. Or likewise, if dad's gonna be an idiot, I hope he would say, "Let dad be an idiot on his own." And I'm gonna pray for him. I'm gonna love him. But that is not going to define my faith. God's going to judge that. I'm just, I'm here to love. I'm here to do uh, this. Now, I have to guard myself. I'm not going to get myself around my, with my kids going a direction if somebody's headed a different direction. I can't. But, and, and, and you guys, if, um, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, I think it's, I don't know if preacher's preaching tonight. He just said he's talking about decision making. But one of the key things in my decision making is where's the arrow pointed? Well, don't look at where somebody's at. They might look all nice, all prim, all proper, everything like that, but where's their direction? Where is is what they're doing? Where does it lead? Where does it go? Everything has to, I, I, that is a key to me. I could, I, I, I honestly, I would rather be around Christians that don't have it together at all, but pointed in the right direction than one who has it all together pointed in the wrong. Amen. Because one, well, they're gonna, I'm gonna get led somewhere. The influence that, uh, what I, I can't control the influence you have over me or I have over you. I cannot control that. I can only control who I allow myself to, to uh, who I allow to influence me. Who, not what. Once I say, once I get in John's presence here, once I say, hey, me and John are, are buds, we're gonna do we're gonna do this, I am now out of control. I've now made the choice to say, I hey, I wanna be, I wanna hang around John. I like John, I think John's heading in the right direction. Whatever influence comes from him, I I'm, I'm trusting that because I'm making the choice to of who. Once I make the who choice, the what, I can't control. And so the who the who is really important in our, in, in our decision making. Once I say who, that's a, for, for our children, when, we, when our children are growing up, I'm, I'm thinking, once I allow my kids in the presence of somebody, I'm saying, okay. Because I can't control it now. Now, the only thing I can do is say, whoa, whoa, I can not do that. And I, I, I rechange the who. No, oh no, not that, no, no. Right, so anyways, just, there's some stuff there um, for myself, so that all that to say is, you're allowed to make judgments, but God does not want us to judge the brother. Um, if I if I think uh, uh, Matt's going to be a bad influence on my grandkids, um, then uh, <laughs> then uh, <laughs> can't do nothing about it. Uh, so, but um, but anyways, but uh, but if that if that was the case, um, I'm not to judge him. I can I'll pray for him, love him, do like this. I can make some judgments on 
direction and activities and things like that. But my job is to love him. My job is to slander him, to hurt him, to take vengeance on him, to make him look stupid, to make him look an idiot, to embarrass him, do all that. As so many of the brethren do when they get disgruntled because some brethren mistreated them. Yep. Where in the world does that come from that somebody says, oh, you're a bad person and I'm going to smear you to all ends, the brethren. You don't get that out of these verses. And so, anyway, that's God. God, God's going to take care of that. Um, when we left, uh, I, I, when I, I had to leave the church, church that I grew up in. Um, I'm growing up, and the way I left, is I left. I didn't criticize the pastor. I didn't seem to do whatever. He was dropping the bus ministry. Um, at the time, they were doing all kinds of bringing, uh, I mean, at one point, I, the, the youth pastor I got in there, Youth pastor got up there. Um, I think he's dead now, so I can talk about him. Um, but, um, but but the youth pastor that was there, at one point I remember him saying, because they were starting to introduce modern music into our church. And uh, I remember the youth pastor saying, he says, now look, don't tell your parents, because we're going to kind of sneak this up on them. But we're going we're gonna, to um, go, go up in front of church and we're going to play this song, but don't tell them. Now, I was, when, I was going, when I was in church, I, I got to be honest with you, I didn't even have a music standard. I, I listened to all the worldly music and whatever, and I was kind of like this, I was like kind of like one foot in the world, one foot in church, trying to figure out my life. And um, and I remember sitting there listening to you pastor say that, and I didn't even have a music standard. I'm like, dude, that is so wrong. I thought, I thought of my dad sitting down in the pew in there, who is trusting a youth pastor to hopefully influence this idiot kid who doesn't have a clue yet what's going on. And he's saying that? I didn't slander him. I didn't even tell my dad. I probably should have. I'm not to judge the he, That's him. You're going to have to stand before God for that comment. Sure. But I'm not here to cause discord. I'm not here to cause strife. I'm not... That's a brother. I think he's in heaven now. He probably, uh, praise the Lord, man. He's saved. He's going to be a brother. We'll probably give each other's hugs as long as there's not any COVID up in heaven. <laughs> 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 you know, there's going to be a day like that. And so, anyways, all that to say, I don't, that's not part of the lesson. Um, but, but why dost thou judge thy brother? It's, a, it's an awesome question to ask. Hang on, Mark. Go. Oh. oh. Um, it's an awesome question to ask. And so, um, why dost thou set it not thy brother? Um, they're awesome questions. For, but So that's all. I, I, the reason why I emphasize that is that's kind of contextually what we're talking. That's the reason Jesus mentions this. Yes. Right. It's the whole reason. He says, hey, look, there's, there is this thing going to go on here. Yep. And if that doesn't kind of shake you to your core, if you look inward at all, because do you know how many times I've been on the other side of slandering my brother? I've done that. I can't take it back. Uh, God's forgiven me. The sin is forgiven. But that work, whether it's good or bad, will be revealed. Yeah. That stinks, all right? Because... I don't want Aaron to find out what I thought about him. So no, no. <laughs> he's gonna find out one day. And, uh, but, uh, but no, honestly, we uh, we anyways, uh, they won't go there. Not honestly, I just think I wasn't thinking bad about Aaron. But, uh, but uh, anyways, but anyways, all that's good. It's good. It, that's a little scary, folks. And and unless we make this real, in our, if this becomes a little bit real in our life, we're like, oh, I ain't saying nothing. <laughs> Um, I, I mean, when you start thinking about that, and once you realize that, hey, that is going to be revealed, it's like, okay, God, you got this. I'm, I'm just leaving it that's to you. Right. right. And that becomes part of our faith fabric. Yeah. At the judgment seat of Christ, and, and I start eliminating that bad, and uh, hopefully the good just ends up showing up there. But um, anyway, so Romans chapter 11, this is just part of review, and I'm not getting to half of this. I'm not going to even, I will get to this today. But Romans chapter 14, so go back to. Um, First uh, Corinthians chapter three. Uh, 
We are laborers to, or verse 9. We are laborers together with God. Or sorry, verse 8. Now he that planteth and he that watereth are one, and every man shall receive his own reward according to his own labor. For we are laborers together with God. Ye are God's husbandry, ye are God's building, according to the grace of God which is given unto me. As a wide master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another buildeth thereon. But let every man take heed how he buildeth thereupon. For other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is which is Jesus Christ. So the foundation is Jesus Christ. Um, your salvation is sure. And then we're going to build upon that. Verse 12. Now, if any man build um, upon this foundation gold, silver, precious wood, hay, and stone. We talked about that last week. Um, or verse 13 says, every man's work shall be made manifest. Notice the emphasis of words on labor and work. That's what this is talking about here. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man is that what it says no man's work man's work sometimes people say people confuse this this is not this is not hellfire um, for somebody this is this it, the fire is being applied to the work not to the person um and so um anyways um man's work of what sort it is if any man's work abide which he hath built there upon he shall receive a reward if any man's work shall be burned so works are what's burning not the person um, um he shall suffer loss but he himself shall be saved yet so as by fire there will be some people who get there who just end up with the foundation that's it they're saved but there ain't nothing built thereupon. Uh, and that's it. That's all that's there. And so anyways, that we don't want that to be us in doing that. So um, uh, let me go to, let's, so anyways, let me go back to verse 12. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, and precious wood, precious stones, wood, hay, and stubble. So the natural question is, is what is the gold, what is the silver, and what is the precious stones, right? We want to make sure we're spending our time on the right things while we're here um, in doing that. So I don't, want to, I don't want to get there and having spent all my life on dead things, wood, hay, stubble, um, on things that are just dead. They're just dead time, dead work, dead everything, no, no connection to life, eternal life. I was to lay hold on eternal life. Um, th these are dead things. These are just things that just rot. They go away. They burn. That's 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 what uh, most people's life consists of. It's just those things. And so, um, anyways, we don't want our life to go up in flames here. We do that, so we want to make sure we get. We're investing. Uh, uh, you see those commercials? Invest in gold. Uh, that's that's a great commercial. Invest in gold. Invest in gold. They have just treasures in heaven. Um, and so um, that's what we want to do. So um, let's look at a couple things. I'm going to start with, um, turn over to uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, I might come back to that. So if you want to just keep, keep that uh, mark what, what there. What verse again? Second Corinthians chapter 4. Um, so let's look at some things. Now, um, I don't think I'm going to have time to show er everything that can be shown. And even if I could show everything I have. I don't think it's exhaustive um, in the sense of, of, of trying to figure out how God does reward. So I'm going to try and look at some verses or at least show you some verses where God seems to indicate that these are rewards, that these are things that last. And so, um, so that's what we want to look at. Look at verse, um, look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 4 and look at verse 16. It says, for which cause we faint not. But though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal what? Weight of glory. Um, uh, so it doesn't get specific there. It's maybe a little bit 10,000 foot level on something. But one thing that you can tie uh, in there from that verse, and we'll look at a couple other verses here. Um, in doing that, um, uh, if you want to write, the, I'm going to turn there, Job 2310 talks about, he says, he'll come form as gold. Um, so trials and afflictions 
um, and us making it through those things. Look at verse 16, for, for which cause we faint not. Um, how many Christians quit when affliction and trials come? And God's saying, look, man, hang in there. There is an eternal weight that waits for you in glory. Now, an eternal weight. Now, I don't know if that's talking about like what you put on your barbells and things like that. I doubt it. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, there's some weighty things there. There's some silver. There's some gold. There's some precious stones. And that's what my life and my work ends up being. And so there, this somehow ties into that somewhere where God is saying there is an eternal reward for hanging in there in what... Now, I was... God says light affliction. And, you know, when heaven says light affliction, that's not something we probably consider light affliction. Uh, although it could be, because sometimes Christians quit over light affliction. Uh, uh, you know, one little problem, and I'm done, I'm done with Christianity. It's like, um, I mean, you could hold God's feet to the fire there. It covers even the light afflictions. Um, I'll, whatever God's, I, I, I mean, I would hate to think what God considers a heavy affliction, <laughs> but but even the light afflictions, and however heaven classifies light, um, but people quit over the craziest things on God, and God's saying here, there's an eternal weight of this weight of being glory if you will just not faint here, guys. I've got a purpose. I've got some things planned here for this. And um, you're not going through this for no reason at all. There is a plan. I've got a plan. Please hang in there. I got something for you. Uh, and so, um, anyways, no matter what happens, whether a brother judges you wrong, right? That's why we read last week. Paul says, oh, "Whether you judge me or not, I don't really care. I love Paul. I love Paul. So I, that doesn't really matter to me uh, what Jose thinks of me. I don't really care. Here's here's here, here, we're, here's what we're doing. That's an awesome Christian attitude, by the way." Uh, that's a you, you, you love to just not be one of the say I don't care persons. This is a great area of the Christian life to say I don't care. Um, I don't care what somebody judges or thinks of me as long as I'm doing right, right? Not if you're doing wrong, then you need to care um, about that. So, uh, but our light affliction. So that's one. That's one thing that you can put there. Look over to First Peter chapter two, and uh, try to look at some things here. First Peter chapter two. Uh, actually. Um, uh, I'll read, um, I'll read that with something else. Actually, no, this is, I can, I can read this here. Um, for, preacher actually read this verse perfectly this morning. Um, 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 7. I don't know if you caught this when he was reading it. Look at it, it says, That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perishes. Right? Now, gold perishes here on earth. That's gonna, all the gold here on earth is going to uh, uh, burn up. But not the stuff up in heaven, and um, and this the trial of your faith is actually more precious than of gold. More precious, um, though it be tried with fire, huh? Might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ. Look at that, the trial of your faith. Look. If you're like me, as soon as I face a trial, I am looking for every escape hatch imaginable. I'm looking to solve the problem, and, and, and in some in some ways, it's not a good Christian attitude to have, but some ways, I'm like, oh God, I'm gonna solve this one really fast, so that you, I don't wanna go through this trial right now. I'm gonna do everything in my power to solve it. I don't wanna be in it. I don't, wanna, I don't know if you naturally react that way, and God might be up and saying, can you just calm down, man? Just, the tri we don't look at trials like this. I don't. Now, I do when I'm looking at it through the word of God. But the old Ken nature does it. The Ken nature says, I don't want any problems. I've got enough problems. And so, but the trial of your faith, it's more precious than gold. And uh, that's tried by fire um, at, and the glory and the appearing um, of Jesus. Turn over to... Um, uh, turn over to Second Peter. Uh, no, still First Peter. Um, look at verse uh, seventeen, uh, chapter one. Uh, it says, uh, or look at verse fifteen. Sorry, but as he which hath called you is holy, 
so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. That's kind of like a 10,000 foot level command, right? Be ye holy. Okay, well, what's holy? The Bible's full of that, right? What holiness is and, and all of that, right? But so at the 10,000 foot level, you got the overall arching commandment to be holy in all manner of conversation. That word conversation in the Bible, if you ever do a study on it, it's not just we the way we use the word today, conversation of words. It's your words and the way you live. It goes beyond just uh, me and Aaron having a verbal conversation here. It's my conversation. It's what uh, the world sees of Ken and what God sees of Ken. It's my conversation. That's what it's talking about. So I'm going to be holy in every little aspect and area of my life. I shouldn't, I shouldn't leave holiness out of any of that because it is written, be ye holy for I am holy. Um, because he's holy, that's why I should be holy. Um, I don't be, I don't want to be, I'm not holy to exalt myself above somebody who's not holy. I have to be holy because of him. Now, people will make you feel that way. Oh, you're holier than thou? No, not really. I'm just trying to be holy because he's holy. That's it. It's really because of him. It has nothing to do with you, man. It has nothing to do with you. The way I live has nothing. You can live how you want to. It has nothing to do with you. You have nothing to do with my decision to be holy at all. Amen. Don't think of yourself so big, okay, please? Anyway, you don't say that to them. <laughs> but in your mind, I want you to be grounded and rooted enough to say, hey, no, it's not about you, man. It's about him. Sorry, I can't, I can't, I can't make you think like him. I can't make you see my point. But I'm going to go do what I'm supposed to do. Because he's holy. Sorry, I don't really like it because I'm not holy myself. But I'm going to be holy because he's holy. Anyway. Um, uh, so, we okay, haven't got to the verse yet. Um, and if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work. So now we're talking about this right here, right? We're back into this subject matter. Um, and if ye call on the Father who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work. Pass the time of your sojourn, sojourning here in fear. Um, so now that doesn't mean walk around scared, like scared of everything, but in fear that you're of this day. I'm supposed to fear fear God. Um, that's what I'm supposed to do. It, uh, later on in the in the in the book here, um, if you want to look at chapter two, verse seventeen, it, he says, "Honor all men, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the king." Um, that's what he's talking about here. So now, in, or in verse 17, I'll read uh, on here. He goes into this kind of parenthetical, um, for as much, and then he goes to, you know, God's the, like, the king of run-on sentences in the Bible. Um, and so he goes on to this discourse of the, the for as much. He says, okay, the reason why you're doing this um, is, um, um, is you know that you're redeemed, and blah, 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 blah. He goes into kind of some doctrinal things here, but I'm going to skip that just for a minute and skip at, past the parenthetical. He says, seeing you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that you love one another with a pure heart fervently. Okay, so he's talking about judging every man's what? Work, right? In verse 17. And so part of that work, remember, we're not supposed to judge our brother. That was the first reasons why he even brought up the judgment seat of Christ. And now he's talking about unfeigned love. Of the brethren. Now look, that's God. That's going beyond what I can do. Unfeigned. If you, unfeigned means um, I have no guile toward that person at all. And that means I don't have ill feelings toward that person at all. That person might not be. I might not agree with their behavior, maybe in what they're doing or what they've done or even what they've done to me or my children. Oh man, somebody messes with your kids. There's no unfeignedness, right? <laughs> Someone messes with my kid, it's like, oh, unfeigned is out the window. It's feigned. <laughs> I might not say nothing. I might zip it all up, but there's feigning going on all over the place, right? Uh, you, you know when David? Remember when David um, feigned himself mad with his spittle? So he was trying to he, he was trying to make the the king was going to attack him, right? He was at the, the Philistine king, and he feigned himself mad. He made it. He faked it. He faked like he was he was mad or like a bad man. He 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 was like uh, uh, he was humbling himself in entire way. You're the king, 
here's God's appointed king, and he's basically running kind of like a coward in a real situation because he would have been killed. And so finally that king goes, oh, man, he's just a madman. Leave him alone. He's not a threat to us. And so anyways, but I, the only reason I bring up that thing is he was feigning himself. That's the opposite of unfeigned. So God's saying, I'm not looking for a fake heart. You ever had somebody, you, you, you ever had somebody know, hates your guts, smile at you? <laughs> He's like, hi, how you doing today? And, and, and maybe they don't know, you know what they know about that. And they're treating you really nice and you're going, you hate my guts. Why are you smiling at me right now? <laughs> right? You can't stand me. You can't stand that person you just complimented right there. And, and like you kind of have the inside scoop on that. By the way, that's judging. Um, so, <laughs> anyways, but we're all, we're, everything's feigned, right? Everything's, this is, be ye holy as I'm holy. Unbelievable. This is stuff that ought to make us fear when, when that bitterness and that ugliness gets up. Because you know, you, you always walk away with a bad taste in your mouth um, after, after the good taste. Of, uh, of thinking through the thoughts and indulging in the what you would do to them and how you could get back and how you could get ben, ben, get them back and do this stuff. And then afterward, you feel all ugly about it. Now, 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 after you've had all those indulging thoughts, go to God in prayer and see how you feel. Mm. It's, 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 a, it's an uncomfortable feeling. Yeah. It's kind of like, uh, God, please get today. Uh, <laughs> but unfeigned. Unfeigned is, God, you know the thoughts that I just thought about that person. And I don't want to have them because you're holy. Not because I really care. But you're holy and I want to love the brethren like you do. You ever seen somebody that is just despicable and God blesses them? Now, now the reason they're despicable is because you thought all the thoughts. You <laughs> thought about them, right? But have you ever, have you ever had that thought? Just like, God, why are you blessing them? God blesses. God has unfeigned thoughts toward us. In many, God decides where He wants to bless and what He wants to do and how He wants to do things. But it's not to me to judge that. Anyway, this is this stinks, man. This stinks. What, what verse? But it's going to show up here. Uh, which verse are you talking about, Mark? The ones that you just did. Uh, in verse twenty-two of chapter one, okay. seeing you have purified your souls and obeying the truth. Um. So, anyways, um. Uh, oh man, I gotta. Um, but anyway, verse uh, chapter 2, verse 1, Wherefore, laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and evil speakings. Now, i got to get to this last thing here. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word that you may grow thereby. Oh, that's the solution, by the way. The word of God will cleanse that stuff. And we've got to get in it. We've got to stay in it. Um, if so be, you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. You know what? Our taste buds ought to be wet with the grace of God and the word of God. Not the thoughts, not our judgmental thoughts. That's, that's, that's a bad taste. Uh, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth, but not God's. And to whom coming as unto a living, whoa, look at this. As unto a living stone, disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious, comma, ye also as what? Lively stones. Lively stones are built up a spiritual house of holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable. Anyway, that he, he said ye. Mm -hmm. the, the, the ye in this room is, is us as lively stones. Ye. Um, uh, I don't have time today. Uh, maybe I'll, I'll pick, try and pick up here next week. But I'll just show you a couple other verses where God refers to people as lively stones. So we talked, the preacher talked about the lively hope. This the this morning that we have home. There's light. You're you're the lively stones, huh? Lively stones, precious that we just read. Precious stones. Hmm. I wonder what's going to show up at the judgment seat of Christ, brethren. Brethren. Now that could be all aspects of brethren. It could be the ones you won. It could be it could be those lively stones that it all talks about here on how you love the brotherhood. When you faced your trials and when they mistreated you and when you said, hey, God, no guile today. I'm not giving in to guile. Unfeigned love of that brother. You saw what they did. You can complain to God. God's okay with that. God, you saw what they did. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of ticked off at that. God, help me to love them like I should. That's the battle we face. And God says, poof, that's something worth rewarding right there. That's going to show up on this day. 
And isn't it interesting how over and over and over, you see this a couple more times, when he brings up the judgment seat of Christ, he's talking about how you and I treat the brethren. Treating the brethren right is huge. Makes you realize why the devil attacks so much in that area. He wants to hurt the brethren. And God says, no, that's precious to me. That's precious. I died for those people. They're my people. And I don't want you to hurt them. I'll, I'll deal with how all the all their faults that when, when we get to this day, don't you do that. You just love them like I love them. And, and God says, I'll reward you, man. Stick in there. Stay in the fight. Don't faint. Your light affliction, you know, Aaron... Aaron uh, isn't happy with the donuts that I chose today. You know, his light affliction. Um, <laughs> you know? That's right. Hang in there, Aaron. You can do it. <laughs> so anyways, but uh, anyway, so I'm going to get you out here. It's 10 after. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. God, uh, God we need you for this. This is uh, this is stuff we got to have you. God, uh, we've got a desire, the sincere milk of the word, God, especially in our marriage with our children with our relationships. God, uh, help us, Lord, in this area of uncleanness, God, of love toward the brethren and and uh, and with no guile, God, with no pretense, God, with no fakeness, Lord. God, um, God, help us to truly love them through you and because of what you've done for them and because of what you've done for us. God, we love you and praise you in your name. Amen. All right, thanks for being here. Thank you. Thank you.